Hi everyone, um, I'm just getting set up here. Um, sorry, I haven't been talking. I've been trying to um, adjust <laughs> to my live video. Um, just am trying to work this chat. Hi everyone, um, I'm just getting Ooh. set up. Sorry, I have to mute that. <laughs> okay. So we have a pretty big um, outcome today. So there's going to be, there might be a little bit of a lag. Um, so I'm going to try and um, go as, at a, a pretty reasonable place. Uh, pace not too fast but not too slow just to make sure that everybody's kind of on the same page I'm gonna try and bring this up to my just up a little bit so you can see it okay um is it a problem that it's sideways? Does it look sideways to everybody? Um. Is it a problem that it's side? Um, yeah, one second. Can everybody hear me? I just want to make sure that I am not muting on my computer. Everybody can hear me? Okay, it just might kind of look funny. Um, I'll have to kind of draw it in steps if it's this way just because it is a um horizontal image so okay so everybody can hear me i might put my camera on like a little angle so that way you kind of get the whole image So with um, my camera, it's really different when I'm doing a live video, so it might just take a minute to um, for me to adjust because it's so much different than my recordings because um, it's not on a camera view, it's through Facebook, so it's a little bit... distorted, so I'm just going to take a few minutes to kind of adjust my camera. This is the problem with having a massive phone. <laughs> it's not a very 
handy thing when I'm doing this. Um, so the video might be a little distorted at first because there's like hundreds of people, almost a thousand coming in. So um, it might just be a little laggy for a bit. Um, so I'm going to just try my, uh, my best here to just wait it out and let people join. Um, I think this is the best I can do with the image. Okay. Alright, that should be good. Um... Someone just said to put it on portrait. Would that work? I don't know. <laughs> I haven't done a live video on this phone before, so I'm just going to click something and we'll see what happens. Nope, that's not what I wanted. Okay. This is the best I can do. For image <laughs> but I'm going to um, like we're gonna be moving and everything so it's not gonna worry too much I'll try and get that out of the way mm -hmm. all right so If I go to landscape, it's going to be, like, the image is going to be sideways. That's the only thing, is that I can't really, um, there's no really way to do this because it's a, a landscape drawing, so I kind of need it to be, um, horizontal, so. I think this is pretty good. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to start with talking about what I am using for my tools. So I'm going to be using a just an HB pencil. It's like your standard um, just drawing pencil. That's all you need for this one. Um, I tried to keep it simple um, so that I know what everybody has at home. Um, and just an eraser and scissors for my eraser. I like to cut up uh, my eraser and get those like nice, really fine edges. Um, it'll help with those little, uh, little details that are, um, that we're going to be doing. And then I had a little bit of a accent on that. <laughs> um, I'm also using Q-tips, um, these are going to be what I'm smudging um, all my details with. You can use a Kleenex. Um, don't use your finger because there are oils on your fingers. Um, so that can damage your drawing and it kind of doesn't really help with... Um, doesn't help with certain... Sorry, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> it just doesn't help with smudging, basically. And just a standard um, uh, pencil sharpener. I also used a 4B pencil. So what that is... Um, oh, this one's... So the f um, a 5 or a 4B pencil is... Um, a darker lead, so that's what gave me those really dark spots, um, the dark shadowing, so it really helps for using that. Um, uh, if you don't have your a 4B or a 5B, you can still achieve the drawing, it just won't, you won't get those like really heavy black um, spots, so 
Um, that's the only thing. So I'm just going to check comments for a minute and make sure that everybody can hear me. This is a recording, so if you kind of get lost as I'm going and you can't catch up or anything, this is being recorded and it'll be up on our Facebook page um, till the end of time, <laughs> basically. Um, so don't stress too much about that. And it'll also be on our YouTube page. You can use um, an HB, a 2B, or a 4B. So basically, the the number on your pencil is an HB is like your regular standard pencil and then when you go higher in the number the darker the lead so that's all that is so I'm just gonna be using um, my HB I'll show you the difference in the 4B and all that jazz so you can achieve it no matter what you have Okay, so I'm going to get started. I'm just going to put this drawing um, down here so you can, and I'll be bringing it into the um, the screen every once in a while, so don't stress if you can't see it. Okay. Um, what just happened? One second here. Okay, so I'm starting with my HB pencil, and all we're doing is we are, if you view everything in shapes, so um, if you look at the body, it's just an oval shape, and then this is a circle shape, and then we have a little triangle and some triangles over here. So when you break things down into geometric shapes, it's it'll make your life so much easier. Don't look at the bird as a whole thing and you're gonna just outline this bird. View it in shapes. Break everything down into little shapes and it's so much easier. So kind of like a little bit off center on your page, we're gonna start. So it's just a little oval. There's his body. So try and be very light with your um, your pencil right now. Okay, you don't want to press too hard and have this like harsh black line because then you have to commit to um, you have to commit to that line. I'm using a sketch pad, yeah. It's just like a regular. Um, I don't want to mess up my, my view, but it's by Canson. It's just a standard sketch paper. Okay, so we're just starting with that oval. Easy peasy. And then we're going to stack his head on top. So your oval's kind of like in a diagonal line, and then his head is now a circle. So I have to find a way to draw around my tripod here so we're just getting like a nice little circle going kind of stack it within his head so it's kind of like um i like to do the motion quite a few times like i go like over and over again um because then you kind of find that rhythm while you're drawing like you're not just doing one line and have to commit to that shape um once you kind of go over and over again it'll you'll find that rhythm okay and then we're going to attach his head so kind of coming down from his bot like into his body so from the back of his head we're kind of just 
forming this little line with a little curve where the neck is. So right in here where we attach those two, there's like a slight little curve. Okay, and then on the other side, same thing. We're just kind of, instead of it just having this harsh um, place where it connects, we're just kind of making it a little bit of a, a smoother curve happening in the neck there. Just making that quite dark so you can see it. Um, if you're having like a green static or the video is lagging, um, try exiting it and coming back into it. Um, there is a lot of people viewing this video, so I think what's happening is it just might be lagging as it's like accumulating people into the thing, so... And then we're going to kind of bring out his belly a bit. Just give him a little bit more of a rounded shape. Right into his, his belly. If your oval was too straight, just kind of puff him out a little bit. I'm kind of trying to stop and go um, just so everybody's on the same page. This is my biggest class so far, so it's a little bit nerve wracking. So now we're going to go into that tail. So with the tail, it is a triangle. So I'm going to show you it's like a swooped kind of rounded um, triangle coming in here. And then it kind of attaches from the body. Don't worry about the feathers happening on top of it. So we're just getting this, this triangle shape happening. Yeah, Facebook's being like laggy and annoying and you just can't follow along. It's going to be recorded. Um, I'm going to kind of continuously say that through the whole... Um, video. It's it's going to be up on our Facebook page and our YouTube page um, and eventually I'm going to re-record it and it'll be you'll be able to purchase it in the future but for the most part it should be up there. So we're just getting this like little triangle shape if it's Maybe I'll, it's a little bit too rounded, so we can just kind of straighten that out a bit. Okay. So, we have a generic shape happening here. So let's go in, let's do his wings. So from his wings, or from his body here, we're going to bring out this, like a swooped shape. So it's kind of like, whoop. I'll show you this just so I can just want you to see kind of what we're doing. So I'm going to continuously bring this back into the, the image just so you can see what we're doing. Um, so it's quite long. So and I'm not good with my measurements, so I don't know. 
it has a little bit of a swoop. Okay, and then from that point, we're bringing it back into the body with a little bit of a curve, a little bit of a bend. Even extend it a little bit if you like. Yeah, if there's like technical questions happening, I'm, I'm not, this is like one of my, this is only my second live video I've ever done on Facebook. So if there's some techie people out there, you are, I would greatly appreciate it if you could help me answer some questions because I'm just like, er, no, nothing, not too good with that kind of stuff. Um, okay, so then we're going to do the, the behind wing. So we're not going to see too much of it. So it's just like a little scoop in behind that other wing. And then we're kind of just bringing that into the body. It's almost a straight line, but a slight curve. It's going to look a little funny right now, but don't stress too much. Hello again, Karen. <laughs> I like to see people that have come back. It's very... Very nice to have some friendly or some familiar people out there. Okay, um, so we're going to go in with the, the beak. Um, it's pretty crazy. So I'm going to just erase some of those excessive circles I did. Um, until I find the one that I like. Mm -hmm. So with the beak, it is, a lot of people think to add the beak coming like straight out from the face, but it's inside the head. You want it to look like it's on the head. So we have to add this little part that's coming in from the face. So I'm just starting with like a little V shape or arrow, sort of. And then I'm just bringing that straight out, and it's really ridiculously long. It's, you know, when you think you're halfway there, just keep going. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to do that dark so you can see that. And then from there... Um, his nose kind of sticks into the flower, so I wouldn't worry too much about, like, the end piece, because you're not really going to see it eventually. So, just kind of bring that back into his, his head there. So it's thicker at the base of the head, and then it gets thin. Here. Big needle. So we're going to do his eye, and we can fix up his head. Like, if you're not keen on your shape, um, don't worry. We're going to kind of play with it a little bit. Um, like, I'm finding my head's too oval. I want him to have, like, a little bit more of a bump, so I'm going to fix that after. But right now we're going to go in with the eye and stuff. So um, this is a pretty small detail, so I'm going to bring it up to the camera in just a second. So what I'm going to do is kind of just explain what I'm doing and then show you. So I'm starting with like a circle right beside his nose and then there's gonna be an inner circle. It's kind of like a half moon. So it's like a black spot and then a little round sparkle. So I'm going to bring that up to the screen so you can kind of see what's happening. Hopefully you can see that. Just waiting for my 
my uh, computer to catch up because it's lagging. Okay, so you can kind of see that what's going on there. So I'll show you with that close up with what I did. So we're going to do the eye. So we're just going to fill in that eye, but I just want to show you really close up what we're looking at. So we're just like kind of shadowing, but we're leaving little white, two little white areas for a shine. And that's what we're going to do right now. So all I'm doing is just adding some gray. So I'm just giving like little circles, like mini, mini circles. And just leaving a little shine on either side of that circle. And just remember, if you're joining now, the video will be up. Um, I'll be on our, uh, our Facebook page forever. It'll just go and stay there. Live in the abyss of the internet. So again, don't stress if you're just joining and uh, you're behind. It's not a problem. Um, right now I'm still using my HB. I'll let you know when I switch to my 4B. Um, pretty much I accomplish most of this drawing with my HB. Um, it's just for those really black tones that we want is where I add my, um, my 4B. Um, so right now we're going to um, attach the nose to the head. So there's like this little part here, it's like a little, little swoop. For the eye, I just used an HB pencil. You can just use um, a regular pencil if you don't have an HB. Basically what an HB mm -hmm. is, is just a standard lead. Okay, so now I'm going to bring my head up a little bit. I want him a little bit more round because I had him a little bit flat. So I'm just going to curve his head out a little bit. Give him a brain in there. Happy birthday! <laughs> okay. There we have our little shape. We got all our shapes in. We're not going to worry about the flower just yet. Um, we're just going to concentrate on the bird. And then um, we'll do the flower later on. Um, just because there's a lot of steps. And we, wanna, we want him to be the main focus. So um, we'll just kind of work on him for a little bit. So now what I'm doing. So when you're drawing. So when we have our shape. Everything, um, oh, we got to do the feathers. Um, but when you look at everything in shapes, again, it, it just breaks it down very easily. And then we add our shadow and our light, and then we go in with detail. So right now we're just kind of building. It's like layers. So think of it kind of like a painting. When you're painting, you always have to kind of continuously add layers to give it that more realistic effect. Um, so what we're going to do, I totally forgot about the tail. Um, we're going to go in and add in all these feathers here. So they're up here. Be up here they're um, shorter. They're smaller because they're, f they're facing us. They're closer to us. So to give that perspective that it's like flowing around his body, these ones have to come a little bit shorter. Um, and then our, our eye would see these really long. Um, so what... I'm going to do is just break them down into shapes. Don't worry about all the little details of it. Um, 
And I'm going to do mine really thick and dark. Um, I encourage you not to do that right now. So just be very light, like with your pencils, just kind of um, like you're kind of like skimming your paper. We're just trying to add in that shape right now, but we don't want to commit to that shape um, because we want to go in and change it and add details. But um, so I'm doing mine really dark right now. So it's just like this, like, uh, like a picket fence looking post. Yeah, that's all we're doing right now. And then we're kind of layering. We're going in this like diagonal shape. We're going with the tail. So again, mine are really dark. You don't have to do yours this dark. It'll help with, um, adding yeah some um maggie i see your picture of the the hummingbird it's cute um yeah some sometimes i don't have this like feathered out tail but i've seen some pictures and they're you can have fluffy tails. So I'm just getting these like little, they're, it's kind of like halfway in the body here, but. So now as I come around, they're getting a little bit longer. But you want to go start going with the shape of the tail. So we're getting this like swooped line now instead of straight out. We're starting to swoop. The one that's kind of down in here is like just a continuation of that shape almost. Let me check some. Um, um, sometimes when I'm to get inspiration, I just with the hummingbird I was up at my mom's cottage and I saw one at her little bird feeder and I was like hmm I want to draw that and sometimes I just take requests so if there's any thing people really want to draw I sometimes just come up with an idea so I can teach people what they want to what they're inspired by so Sometimes it's not always my inspiration. Mm, I might add one little skinny one back in here a little bit. Again, we're going to change the shape, so don't worry if it looks a little funny right now. All right, just gonna let everybody kind of catch up there for a minute. Um, so what we're going to go in now is we're gonna add some shading. So I'm still using my HB pencil. Um, oh, if I'm going too fast, I can slow down. Um, take a second. I'll let you guys catch up on your tails, and then I'll uh, jump to shading. So just, if you're kind of waiting for the next step, maybe just see if there's anything in your shape that you want to change. Um, you know, maybe adjust some little spots. His wing is really long. You can always, if you're not happy with your wing, you can extend him. Might even...
All right, so for the shading, so all we're going to do now, I'm going to take the shading pretty slow. So if you're still working on your um, your tails or whatever, don't don't stress too much. It's uh, This part's not too hard to catch up on. Um, so what I'm doing is like all these like dark areas here, like the gray under the neck, gray on his head, down his back, like in here a little bit just like randomly throughout his his body um, what I'm doing is just adding lead to my um, to his little body and then we're gonna smudge it out so we're just trying to get this like these different tones of gray happening in the background before we add in the detail Just remember this video will be up afterwards um, on our Facebook page. So I'm going to repeat that a little bit <laughs> all through the video. Um, so what I'm doing, so I'm using, when I'm shading, don't go up and down with your pencil. Um, you'll get like really um, harsh lines if you're using your pencil up and down. Right now we, we want like a soft shadowing happening so I'm using like the side of my pencil and it gives you like a nice texture without having all those like pencil lines when you go up and down because it's a really harsh I'm just gonna erase that um you can almost like indent your paper you don't want to do that right now I'm just going to take a minute to read some comments. Yeah, when we do uh, the wings, like basically we can just adjust the shape as we're working with them. Like when we go in with the wings, uh, we can adjust the shape. So don't stress too much um, there. I'll kind of give another little lesson on that. So right, right now I'm just adding some shadow on the top of his head, kind of coming down. So like where his wing is might not be able to see that too much because I'm trying not to be you don't want to be too heavy with your shadow right now um, I'm still using my my regular HB pencil right now so I'm just gonna kind of show you what it looks like so it's very light it looks contrasted in the, the video there but it's just from heavy lighting Don't worry about your tail feathers. It'll all come together, I promise. They mine look funny. They're We're going to go and adjust them and like make different shapes and stuff so we can adjust it after. Um so now I'm going underneath his neck a little bit like to the that um original circle of his head. I kind of just followed that a little bit just adding in just a little bit of lead. Kind of following all along there. I guess I could have made that simple. Just kind of shade his head a little bit. <laughs> and then down around his body. And around his back. The inner part, so it's just kind of random. Um, they're in like little patches, kind of like in here a little bit. There's one there and one there. So let's, we'll say three. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of making these like little U shapes for this part. So it's just to add like But you don't want them too perfect. So kind of just they're just kind of random little spots of shadow. It really doesn't 
matter too much. Don't stress about it. Like some are just lines, little scribble spots. And then down in his tail, I'm doing like kind of underneath, just in here, a little spot just to break up that rounded spot there. I'm just adding a little, couple little things. Now I'm going to grab my Q-tip and we are going to start smudging that out so those lines or those shading areas that we we did um just kind of smudge them out and work them into the white a little bit so we don't want these like harsh shadows like we don't want just like black and then white. We want gray tones. So again, you can use for this part, if you don't have Q-tips, you can use a Kleenex. Um, you can use paper stumps, which are an actual art product. Um, I don't have an example. So these are paper stumps. Um, they're really awesome. Once you kind of use them over and over again, you get lead on them. And then you don't even have to apply um, lead to your paper. But it's kind of cheating when I'm trying to teach you how to smudge. So, um, But if you have one, they're awesome. They work a lot better than a Q-tip. But I just like to use products I know people have at home. I want everybody to be able to, to be able to draw. Now, sometimes your Q-tip gets a little gunky. I might just have to flip it. So basically, we're just pushing this gray out into this white. Kind of just smudge those little areas that we... Um, that we used... Or put in there. But it's a little time consuming, so I kind of have to just keep giving her. Um, so I've been drawing since, I think, probably eight years old. Well, first I started in watercolor classes, and then in high school I discovered how much I love pencil. And then I went to college for photography, <laughs> and then I went for painting, and then I switched back to pencil. So <laughs> I've just been kind of all over the map, but... Pencil, I feel the most comfortable with. I feel I can control it a lot better than other mediums. Okay, so he's kind of like this gray tone happening. Um, so now we're going to go in and darken some areas. Um, so kind of those first initial spots that we did. Um, I know it seems funny and like, why are we redoing something that we already did? Um, what the purpose is, is layering. 
um, when you layer, you add another dimension, another, um, like, well, what's that word? Um, depth to it. So I know it's a little bit repetitive, but we're just going in and kind of just start pushing out some of that gray again. Um, we don't want it, want it in just like one section. Like we kind of just, we want to feather it out. So it's like kind of a gradient between this like white and this gray happening. So you can kind of push some out, some little areas. Um, let's scoop around the eye. You can add a little bit of a gray piece there. And again, I'm just using the side of my pencil. So the side of your pencil gives you like a grainy texture, sort of. And with that, you kind of want that texture because it's going to help with the texture of the hair. Um, so I'm going to bring up, because I haven't kind of brought this up to the camera in a while. Um, I just kind of want to show you up close what's starting, what's starting to happen is we're, we're adding texture and depth to it. So it's starting to come alive a little bit. Around the beak, um, we kind of want some, a little bit of dark, a little dark patch. So it kind of looks like it's coming out from the hair a little bit. So again, I'll come up to the camera and show you in just a second. Ooh, I don't like what I just did there. That was an accident. So around the beak, I'm just adding like a little bit of kind of dark shadow. Try and kind of feather it into the head a little bit. We just want kind of like a dark tone happening. And around the eye. Can add like a little mask kind of happening around the eye. Again, my picture might look really contrasted. Um, my It's pretty soft, to be honest with you. It's like a light gray tone, um, but the camera's adding a very dark um, like harshness to it so try not to be too heavy with your your shadowing um, you want this like nice kind of transparent shadowing okay and then as I say that we're gonna add um, a heavy shadow under the neck so again I'm just going up and down when I'm doing this like shadowing I'm using the side of my pencil and I'm going up and down in like little strokes. It's not, or it can be like circular, but for the most part, it's always in the same direction. I'm not going sideways or up and down, or while well, I am going up and down, but I'm just trying to keep the same motion. You want it like a consistent motion. So kind of commit to... one sort of motion happening when you're shadowing. Uh, Susan, I will be, um, this video will be up on our Facebook page after the event, so you can join or watch the video later. <laughs> and also it'll be on YouTube. Okay. So from there, um, let's give his back a heavy shadow in here, just behind his head there, a little bit. <laughs> Down in there, and then those areas again. Just add another little heavy shadow to them. Again, don't they don't have to be perfect. 
Mine are just kind of like scribbled in there. Just to give some extra little dimension to his body. Now you can see the video on the, the Facebook page afterwards. It's, um, it'll just be like in our, our video like section. Um, it'll be posted after the live video and then it'll also be on our YouTube channel. And it stays up for like forever. It's just once it's up, it's up. Yay! We have a little bird. Yep, yeah, I'm gonna bring that close up and then we're gonna add some hair. Or fur, I guess. Oh, sorry. I didn't see what I was doing there. So for his hair, or whatever, um, so all I'm doing is adding texture. It's a really kind of like fast paced movement. Do not stress about every little hair stroke. Um, you want to let loose. You want that natural um, flow, um, what's ha like with the hair so again don't think of every little hair stroke let your hand go so what we're going to do is I'm, I'm going to show you on on my paper here so that you can see what I'm doing so I'm going I'm like slashing in little clumps Just continuously. So it's a really kind of fast pace um, motion. Um, and it's just to add that extra, extra detail. And so the thing you have to think of is we want to keep the, um, the motion, like you have to go with the natural flow of the hair. It's not all going to be down in one direction so around his head so at the top we're going with that shape of his head so it's this way feathers yes thank you it just looks like hair is it itty bitty Okay, so I'm like going with the shape of his head there. So I'm scooping around the top of his head. And again, this is a very light, very, very light. I'm not pressing hard. It's, you're slashing. So down at the bottom of his face, I'm just going pretty well, just downwards, really. Okay, this should be a quick little easy part. So I scooped at the top, went this way with the hair, and then downwards that way. And then it's going to look really flat, but we're going to... I'll show you. In the next step, you're going to see it kind of come to life. So now down the body... I'm just going downwards. Really, this part, it's not, um, it's pretty much all down from here. So I'm just, again, just throwing it in there. It's, don't think of every little movement. Let your hand go. So basically all I'm doing, it's like using a, a chopstick. It's like, your fingers are doing the movement. I'll give you a little close-up. It's almost like you're combing his hair. Feathers, sorry. 
Deet, 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 deet. Don't worry about things that... Don't stress too much about what it looks like right now. It's going to look really flat right now, but we're going to chop that up with our eraser. And then down in the tail, I went this way. So I'm going with, with the shape, basically. Okay. So what you're going to want to do, if you have an eraser, um, chop it, get a little chunk off, so I'm going to move my light here, um, so we, I want that fine edge of my eraser, that's why I cut it, so it gives you a nice crisp edge, and we're going to use that edge just like hair. Just like we did with the hair, we're going to go in now with a highlighter and break up that those little hairs a bit because it kind of became, it just becomes a little flat. So breaking up that hair, again, just adds another layer. So again, I'm going with, I'm going with the shape. So around the top. So leave some of that gray, like kind of skip a beat. Like you don't want to just... I'm going to bring it up again close so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm chopping up some of that gray. So I'm leaving some of it, but not... So now with the white down in here, it's just the same motion as the pencil, just not as close together. It's just kind of breaking up those gray pieces. So it adds like a highlight to the to the hair a little bit. <sighs> and then we can go in a little bit and just now press a little harder and just like add random little black hairs a little bit. Just kind of like little slashes of dark. Kind of randomly. Just to break it up again. Maybe up in the, the head you can add some little patches of gray again. We'll just make them look even more floofy. So, um, and then the one thing with the tail, I didn't do the tail when I did that. It's okay if you did. Um, we want the tail section. It's kind of like his little belly. Um, we want this part to be a lot more white because um, hummingbirds are like a darker tone up here and then they're quite light in their tail. Um, so we want to go in and add a lot more white. So kind of scoop it like around his belly area so come in from his belly and then just kind of go with that tail a bit just give a nice white <sighs> texture happening here and then if you have to redefine kind of this i did a little patch here because it helps with the illusion that okay that's where his belly is and then this is where his tail starts. So 
adding this little patch of dark right there kind of just helps with the illusion. So I kind of just went down with the tail and then kind of where his body starts going up, I just add a little bit of a black, dark patch there. And then if it's too much, it looks really dark on my screen, you can just kind of smudge it out. Kind of hide it within that little tail. I'm um, sorry, I didn't see any of these comments. I'm just going to... Um, Jennifer, I never use my finger personally when I'm doing pencil because it the oils in your finger can ruin your paper. Um, but if you're doing charcoal might be different but that's a whole whole other ballpark um okay so we're gonna go in with his wing now um so this is where you can adjust your shape um and everything so if you're not happy with it um just kind of take a moment and kind of get his his shape so it's just like a little swoop and then kind of bring it down so if you look at this it's kind of like a half lemon sort of deal going or a teardrop um, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add this section of where there's gonna be little feathers so what I'm doing is starting kind of midway down this wing in here and then as I'm going up I'm getting skinnier and skinnier and skinnier and then I kind of want to wither it off to the point Um, I'm using, yeah, I think it's, mine's just like a white rubber. Uh, you can use like a vinyl eraser too. I use those as well. I recommend staying away from like those pink school erasers. They are horrible. They're horrible for this kind of stuff because they can stain your paper. Um, okay. So now what we're going to do is um, I have quite a bit of lead on my wing here but if you don't have any just throw in some lead quickly it doesn't have to be perfect just throw it in there and um, just so you can smudge it so we can get a nice gray tone so now I'm kind of just in that one area don't worry about the bottom part of the wing um, just smudge that out, get a nice gray tone happening. Um, now we're going to make little, um, W shapes, right? I think about my letter, um, little U shapes. So, duh. sorry, I'm going to get up close here. So now what I'm doing is going with the angle of the wing. So not down, but diagonally. I'm adding in these little... new shapes okay, and then as they kind of come out this way they start to just kind of wither off and just start getting them 
Gotta fake them in there. Sometimes I take a minute just to catch up on comments. Um, if you're struggling, don't stress too much. Just thank yourself for coming out. Um, it's always good to try something new. And remember, you can always rewatch the video and try again. Um, so now we're not going to like shadow too heavily. I'm just adding a shadow right in here, like at the top part a little bit. And then I'm going straight into my hair. So that um, texture that we did in the body is all I'm doing in here. This is a pretty quick, quick little section. Just doing those little um, slashes of hair. And then again, going in with my eraser. So I just got to find my good one. So your nice sharp eraser. If you get like little um, eraser marks on there, just kind of erase it off if you need a nice sharp edge. So now between each little U shape that I did, I'm throwing in like a a little eraser bit. Just kind of like highlighting each And it doesn't have to be perfect, it's just kind of hair. And then what I'm doing is just kind of shadowing each one a little bit. Like I'm just kind of, you know, it's not perfect. I'm just redefining that little U shape and making it kind of blending them together so now they're not so harsh. I'm not doing them too, too heavy. Um, with nature, when you're drawing nature, and I'm sure you've probably heard this in all my videos if you've joined me, um, doing things perfectly is, um, it, it, it doesn't help with the illusion of nature. Nature is very wild, so, um, when you're when you let loose and try not to think of each individual little hair stroke um you know because nature isn't perfect so you're gonna have those wild little hairs sorry i'm just scrubbing that out a little bit okay so now we're gonna go in with this these like longer feathers um so try to imagine that they're all kind of going to this like one point it's not just straight down you can see that it's kind of coming off on an angle so you're kind of just trying to always reach this like point up here a little bit so again it's not straight down it's think of like a fan almost like one of those little hand fans did you like that so I'm just drawing in the like little lines here so 
so they get like a little bit longer and more slanted as you come to the end. I'm still using my HB, yeah. Um, I haven't added... Uh, the 4B will probably come in in just a moment. Actually, I might throw in the 4B at the end. You'll, you'll see. It'll all come together. Um, okay, so now what we're going to do is from each of those, like from the top of this section, we're just throwing in some shadow a little bit. I'm hoping this class, not hoping, but um, you know, for your sake, so I'm not keeping you all night. I'm hoping to be done by 8. I did have a little bit of a late start because I couldn't figure out my view. Um, but it might be slightly after 8, but um, I'm hoping to be done by then. Let you guys get back to your... Monday evening. So now I am taking my q-tip and I'm just pulling that gray down. And it's okay if it doesn't hit the bottom. Like, just let it kind of feather out like an ombre or a gradient. Just let it kind of flow down. If you're still working on that, don't worry. Um, so now you can go in with your HB and now I'm just darkening those lines a bit. Because they kind of get lost when we smudge, so we just want to go in and redefine those. Okay, and then you can redefine this top section a little bit. And then again, just like we did with the head, I'm just adding another dark layer. We're not going to smudge this one out, so um, try and feather it in. So you don't want just like a harsh shadow and then stop it. So it's, you don't want to like block, make them like blocked shadows. Kind of smooth it into that, that gray tone. So be heavy at the top and then kind of... Get lighter and lighter and lighter as it kind of comes down a little bit. Okay, so it's kind of like a, a transition. You want that nice, nice blend. Okay. Um, so we're going to do that back wing. So if you had troubles in the beginning with that back wing, it's just like kind of coming out from the middle point of that first wing. And then you're just kind of bringing it into the body. Mine's kind of shapeless right now. I might just change him a bit to give him a little bit of a scoop there. Yeah. No, I don't like it. I liked my original line. So, now we're 
we're basically just doing the same same thing so with the back one you're not really gonna see this top part too much you're gonna probably see just like a sliver of it in behind so that's all you're doing is adding that and then you know there's not much detail in there so you can just kind of fill it in smudge it out and we'll just add like one little detail in there maybe just add one of those little u shapes one or two just like a few little scribblies and you can it, it would be pretty heavily shadowed from this wing so i wouldn't even go in with the eraser we're not even going to worry about that too much um and then we're still we're just going to redo that so again, you're, it's on an angle, so like a fan. Try not to let your lines match up. Like I, that doesn't really look good. Um, because it would just look like the same wing. You want them to not look like they're... The same there so just kind of skip a line if you have to Um, I see you guys commenting on my perspective. Um, if you don't want to add a second wing, you don't have to. And so I'm just shadowing in here. And bringing that shadow down. I added a second wing because they move really fast. So you would technically kind of see a little bit of it. Um, so I'm redefining my lines here, adding in a sh heavier shadow. Um, so this wing would be shadowed pretty heavily from the other one, so you can add in a little bit of a darker shadow happening. Sorry, someone requested to see the original. So, just bring that into perspective for a second. Um, 
with the q-tips I kind of just switch it up like once one gets like used quite a bit I just grab a new one but it doesn't hurt to use the same one Yeah, I did that wing pretty big, but oh well, art is in the eye of the beholder, so. I think he's cute. Alrighty, so what we're going to do. Um, yeah, if you don't want to add a second wing, I mean, it's your art piece. I'm just kind of, um, <laughs> that's just what I thought looked nice. So I did a second wing because I think you would see a second wing because they move really fast. So if you don't want to add one, it's your art piece. I'm just kind of doing my, doing my thing. All right, so for the tail, um, so we're going to change up the little shape in there. I'm going to sharpen my pencil because you're going to want like a nice fine point uh, for this part. So what I'm doing with the shape is making it a lot more feathery. So you can kind of see it. Um, it's just kind of like a choppy, like always going outwards or inwards, sorry. So I'm trying to get a more natural, um, more natural shape than this like fence post I got going. So I just did that so you can kind of understand the, the shape of it. Um, so you can erase it a little bit and I'll show you what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do is just, again, I'm trying to be quick. I'm not thinking of every little pencil stroke and then I'm adding a line. So you're kind of coming in, you're scooping that line with the natural flow. Okay, and then all you're doing is just that you're chopping it up. Okay, so you're like adding little... Mm -mm -mm. So I'm like literally just, just getting a point up here and then so don't think too much about your shape. You want it to look natural. So to make it look natural, you just, it won't be perfect. It's going to have those little ridges and edges, and that's all we're doing. Just tossing in, so this, this line, this middle line kind of is what counts the most here. Um, you you want to go with that flow. That, that shape, you want that bend. this point you don't even have to erase your lines really you can kind of just yeah. 
so I'm just taking a sec. Whoa, that one went weird. <laughs> okay. I'm like making little like sections almost when I do that. Um, so with the bottom one, he's coming coming around. Mm. A little curve. I'm almost making yeah, like just just trying to imagine what a feather looks like. It's very like Oh, floofies. Just throwing in my line, looping it out. It's like little zigzags almost. <laughs> As you kind of come to this last one, you're not really going to see too much. Just kind of like fluff it out at the end there. You're so cute. I'm going to erase this stuff. Okay, while you do that, I'm going to show you the next step. Um, at this point, we're all kind of like on our own little little journey here, so don't stress too much if you're still working on your thing. So what I'm doing is, same idea as this, basically, is I'm just at the tip, like where it goes into the body, um, I'm just adding in shadow, and then we're bringing that shadow into the down into the tip basically and I'm not adding too much right now I'm just kind of throwing it in so I'm like coloring the tip of it and then just taking a q-tip and pulling that Do the tip. Leave the tip nice and white, I think. I think it looks kind of cute. And then we're going to add in those heavier shadows so it looks like the feathers coming um Oh, sorry. I'm just reading um, some comments. Sorry, I'll bring it up closer. So with those feathers, if you're, if you're kind of stuck on that part, I was just kind of like zigzagging, but always going inwards, like you're going in towards the body there. And then I brought my lines out, going with the shape, and then I shadowed in here, like I just threw in shadow at the base and then smudged it out to the, so it kind of goes out to the tip. Okay, and then what we're going to do to kind of melt it into the body is we're going to add like darker shadows around like wherever it sticks into the body we're gonna add some little gray tone and then kind of fluff out any if there's like any 
gaps between the feathers. We're just going to kind of hide it with a little bit of a shadow. So in the body, I'm just kind of bring it up again. So these are like little minuscule details. So kind of around his feathers, I'm just kind of adding in darker spots there for like the hair. So I kind of want to work this into his his body, but I don't want just like black sitting there out of nowhere. You kind of have to blend it. So what I'm going to do is kind of bring it in out like hair. And then if it's too much, just tone it down with a little Q-tip. Just kind of around this one area really not too much over here because it it's almost like it's behind just kind of working it into that that body so you're kind of making it look like hair or those little sorry not hair the little kind of feather motion that we did up here that's what you you want to do you kind of want to just blend that in to the body um yeah, if they don't touch, um, that's where I added in gray. So between your feathers, if you have like some gaps, you can kind of just fluff it out with a little bit of gray tone happening in here. Just kind of, sometimes a lot with drawing is kind of faking in that detail. So now you can, if your feathers are pretty far apart, just kind of, blend them in or add in like a nut, a little fake feather, you know, just push it together, kind of maybe add like a little, little fake one in there. It re really doesn't, it's a foofy tail, so it's, I don't know if we can show and tell. I don't know how to do that on a live. Um, maybe a, maybe in the comment section at the end we might be able to. Be super cute. It's my favorite part. It's like watching or seeing everybody's end pieces. Okay, so you can kind of define those like little. You want to add some like black back in there from smudging and throw in some little harsh black. So this is where you could use your 4B. So if you brought your 4B with you, so that's a, a thicker lead, you can throw in, ooh, see that like punch? Kablam! Um, but if you don't want to do that, if you don't want that heavy, heavy black, um, black can take over, so just be careful. Um, this is where you can add in that 4B. You can darken your shadows in here if you want, like, a, a heavy contrast happening. Um, so th that's what those, um, 
those thicker pencils are for. They're just to give you that harsh, harsh black and that it's convenient sometimes. Uh, I'm not going to work too much with it just because I want to keep it uh, pretty central. Like I like to use, I know everybody has a standard pencil at home. It's just one of those items everybody has. So that's why I kind of try and just stick with it. Um, but yeah, this is where you can, if you do have that 4B, you can go in and, you know, maybe darken your eye, get that really heavy black eye, make it punch a little bit, make your shadows darker, your whites lighter. Okay, so um, that's about that. Oh, I forgot one little thing in there. Um, with your feather, adding in those like little these little things coming out from the center like those little uh, veins just one more little detail you can add sorry I'm trying to work around my tripod here Boop, 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 boop. Okay. Just gonna take a second here and I don't know. Alright. Um forgot his beak. <laughs> Go make this little beak here. And then we're gonna do the flower and we're finito. So from that um, V shape that we got here, so from that middle of that V where it points, we're going to break his beak in half. That sounded horrible. I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> um, so we're just kind of shadow... What's happening? Um, I'm just adding in like a little line and like a little bit of... Like a shadow from the tip, and then we're kind of leaving most of it white. Um, we we won't, there's not too much detail happening here, so I'm just kind of adding like a little bit of a shadow coming out from his head at the top, and then from the outer part, maybe it just kind of withers off there, and that's that's pretty pretty much it. So I just added in like a little piece there, and then maybe a little bit of a dark line in there. It's such a skinny little section that you don't really... I hope I can see everybody's birds at the end. It's, I didn't even think of that. I just love how different they turn out. That's the fun part about this, is that you can never draw the same picture twice. Like, even my two hummingbirds look very different. Um, and they just have their own little characters. Okay, so with the flower, what I'm doing first is... Um, Me, 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 me. So I'm just reading some comments. Yeah, the feathers are a little, a little tricky, but you can always go in and redo them too. You just kind of find that, that rhythm. Um, so with the flower, we want them pretty close, uh, so that it looks like his beak is going in. So we're just starting off with like this bell shape, like a. A little bell. So let's kind of start. That seems too far. Maybe a little closer. A 
How about there? Like a U shape. And then from there, it's just kind of a... Uh, I don't even know what kind of flower that is. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm kind of funny. Um, maybe like a tulip. Perhaps I made it up. <laughs> I don't know. No, they're a thing. They're like a bell-shaped flower. I've, I've seen them. They come out at like Easter time. Uh, I want his beak to look like it's going in there. So we might have to one second. Split up the petal. We want this like center point happening so it looks like he's going in. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so what I did there. So that one wasn't working out. So I just brought this one down through this one in there. So it looks like it's the in behind petal. So the, this one's on top. Everybody's flower is going to be a little bit different. Tulip, yes. Okay. A little leg. Up in here, we have a little, oh, someone said I forgot a little leg. I'll throw in a little black shadow there. It'll be like a little, woohoo, that's cute. Like a little leg muscle. Okay. Back to the flower. Um, so in here you'd have like a little in behind petal as well. So you might have to just, with the t this flower, you might have to just kind of play with it um, to get that perspective that it's going in. Because like a petal wouldn't come right to his nose. So just kind of move this petal if you need to and play with it and then from there meh, what am I doing there's like a little star shape burst little star burst happening kind of where the flower blooms into its um stem Sorry, when I'm concentrating, I stop talking. <laughs> it's not a good thing. Okay, and then to... I'm going to bring that up so you can see it. So it's like a little starburst. Like a little, like a little star happening there. Ooh, daffodil, yes. Yeah, your flower might be bigger. I mean, I just did mine <sighs> pretty small, but it's hard to teach and draw at the same time, so it's tricky. You might have to get your flower a little bit bigger. I might have to adjust mine here.
And so take in consideration the size of your bird. Thank you. And just kind of made it a little bit, a little bit bigger. There. Anyways, okay. So from there, so we want this like, um, like a framing situation happening. So to kind of, instead of just like dropping your, your stem, let's Give it a little bit of a bend, a curve. Um, it just helps with like the flow of the picture, makes it like kind of nice and like round. Might even scoop mine more. More for just like visual effect. I mean, the flower probably wouldn't do that but just to give the illusion that he's floating into it okay and then we're gonna add some little leaves So the leaves are kind of like the feathers. So if you struggled with the feathers, I'm going to kind of slow down at this part. Um, so then even after this video, you can go in and fix your feathers. Um, I kind of just wanted to make sure I got this done at an appropriate time. So with the, the leaves, and what I mean is that they're, they are quite shaped like a of a feather is where you want your points to like it's not just like a perfect round leaf you want those like little jagged edges it's like instead of it being so like perfect you need to get those those points in there. But it's always going downwards, so you're always aiming like towards your the centerpiece. Okay. This is where I'm going to struggle because my tripod's in my way. Um, and then you can just kind of throw in some other little little pieces. So remember that leaves grow up and out, not straight out from your stem. Maybe you have one that's kind of Bending downwards. My light's getting too shiny. One second. I'm just going to bring this into the perspective here just so you can see what's happening. Okay, and then that's all we're kind of doing now is just adding in those leaves. I'll bring this up. My light is kind of reflecting here. I'm gonna do it sideways. There. 
Just so you understand shape. Sorry, it's getting, getting annoying as it's getting darker. My window's kind of taking away my natural light. Um, okay. So let's finish that up and just shadow it. Um, so with the flower here, I just added in some shadow coming out from the base. They're a pretty light flower. You have to think how delicate they are. They're almost see-through, so we don't really want a heavy shadow. You can even just use... Even that's a little bit too, too dark there. I think these were actually not a tool up. It was when I was referencing a photo, they were blue. And I think someone in the comments said a bluebell. And they are kind of a smaller flower. They're not as big as a tool up. It's like a little tiny bell shape flower. So I'm pretty much just filling all this in at this point because I added too much shadow, but we're gonna add in some um, highlights so we can kind of break that up. Um, so with my eraser I'm just like kind of pulling out I want my um, the tips of my uh, petals to be the lightest so I'm kind of just pulling out using again the flat area and just working that highlight into the the base I'm just kind of highlighting each one Just reading some comments. Um, I, I'm doing some more classes. Uh, they're paid ones, <laughs> um, but I usually do them on Sundays. Sundays, she schedules me, and I have some cute ones coming up. It's like a girl's face. Um, I have another one. It's like uh, someone listening to headphones with like all these little rainbow butterflies flying around her. Um, so now what I'm doing here is I'm just um, taking down the harshness. I'm trying to get a gradient happening. So from my, my dark gray there to my white, you always want like a transition happening. Oh, I just choked on my spit. Um, and then again, just feather it out. Just layers, layers, layers. We're in the home stretch, so we're almost done. Um, you can kind of shade your little petals. And then we're going to add in these lines. We're going to move closer. This part's pretty intricate, so I'm just going to ditch the I can't really see what I'm doing down there um, and I'm just making this like transition and then with my eraser I'm just like almost like translucent translucent highlight happening So the petals you want nice and light, but we want some of these like gray tones sitting in there. Like it just kind of helps with like perspective. So like down on this one side of the petal, there might be like a little shadow. 
I'm gonna bring down that shadow. You kind of have to like watch it form to be like, oh, there's like the little bend in the. Okay. And then we're just gonna finish up some details. So I'm just gonna add a little line. This just helps with perspective that it's coming up and out. You can kind of smudge that out, make it not so harsh. Again, my screen is making everything super contrasted. It like pumps up those blacks and makes those whites really pop. Um, in reality, it's it's a lot softer looking. So if yours doesn't look like that, that's that's good. So on one side of each of the starburst, give it a little shadow. You always want it to be on the same side, sort of, and then kind of give this a nice trans um, I forgot my word I was looking for. And then down on the one side of the stem, so pick a side. So the light's kind of coming up from the top. So I'm going to go on this back side of the stem and just give that a heavy shadow. Keep the one side light. And I'm using the side of my pencil. I'm getting that nice grainy texture when I come down. So I'm just like pulling a line and then just kind of feather it out at the end. It just kind of makes a nice um, transition. That's that word I was looking for. So it's just like a really heavy shadow on the one side. And then with our leaves, um, kind of same, same idea as the rest. Always kind of working from one, from like the, the bottom part just adding in a little bit of shadow and then I'm gonna smudge it out I really didn't put too much heavy detail into this part because I wanted the focus to be on my bird Kind of smudged it out. Again, I didn't like add too much detail. And then I just went in with the little bit of my black again and just kind of any of those lines I might have lost when I smudged went back in with. Yeah. So again, remember if you're still kind of like working away, um, like once I finish this video, it automatically uploads to Facebook. So it'll be in our video section of the artist palette page. And it'll also go to YouTube. So you can watch it on either one of those. Um, we try and do one each artist um, with artist palette. We try and do a free one um, once a month. Um, I haven't come up with my, um, what month are we in? September, <laughs> I haven't even come up with one yet. So I'm gonna be working on that uh, this week. So um, just if you can't join any, or if you can't um, get any of the paid events, or you're just watching your budget, um, you can always watch for our free ones. Um, they'll come up and hopefully next time I know how to work my live video. I'll have to do some training, I think. <laughs> um, it's kind of difficult 
for me to to learn i'm still a little bit technical not very or but I'm, ugh, I'm not very technical so it's a little bit of a struggle today and i'll try and start on time next uh in my next video but just want to thank you all for joining me and um, being patient um really encouraging me helping me and i just you know, supporting my my artistic practice i love teaching it's one of my favorite things so just want to thank everybody for um coming out and again if you're a bird if you're like i hate it um just thank yourself for coming out and trying something um it can be intimidating pencil is very different from paint it works in a totally different manner so um again just be soft with yourself and thank yourself for coming out um it was a lot of fun so yeah i'm just gonna read some comments and see if anybody's still working away and needs any any help here I don't know how to send a photo. Um, you could probably post it in the um, discussion board, like in the event. There's like a discussion spot. Um, maybe what I'll do is say, let me see your photos. And you can um, post in, in the comment section there. Cause I, it's my favorite part to just seeing everybody's um, bird kind of come to life you know they're supposed to look different and they're not supposed to um you know all look the same that's what makes art beautiful is that it's all our different personalities coming out so seeing lots of thank yous thank you guys for coming out it was so much fun <laughs> Oh, my mom commented, she said, don't worry about the technical issues, you're an artist. <laughs> Thanks, mom. All right, awesome. So I'm going to sign off so that this uh, video can be posted. Um, so if you would need to go back and change anything, you can just, um, you know, go back and play that one part again. Um, yeah, awesome. Thanks, guys.